We were back on the road by noon the next morning, and no, the trains did not keep us awake overnight. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure if any actually went by after the one we filmed. We packed up the RV and took off down the WOW Highway. Today's drive takes us to another great little town just about three and a half hours away called... Ladies and Gentlemen, The Traveling Wild Barriers. Grand Forks. We pulled into the A&W on the main road and decided we would grab a bite to eat there instead of cooking in the RV this time. We both ordered a famous A&W root beer with our meals and we both noticed an odd taste. It turns out they use cane sugar here in the fountain drinks. That's what they told us anyways. It was alright, but different enough that we could tell that it didn't taste quite like the A&W root beer we were used to. After we ate, we sat around chatting and relaxing for a bit. Ken checked Google Maps to see if he could find us a nice spot to boondock, which he did, and it was just down the road. We headed on over to that spot I found on Google Maps. It turns out it was a very nice spot with a huge parking lot that didn't directly attach to any of the buildings nearby. And, just to make things comfortable, there was already someone parked there in an RV. Perhaps an overnight spot as well, we thought? The waterway was just a few steps away, so we got out to walk around and check things out. We came across a shelter that had been built on the banks at the edge of the parking area. It was quite well camouflaged and hidden from direct view. We walked down towards the water's edge past the shelter, and noticed that there was no one using it at the moment, so we had a quick look inside. The water was nice, and it was a really warm day, so after our walk, we grabbed a couple of chairs and positioned ourselves right on the water's edge. Ken went in swimming as I read my book. He swam across to the sandy beach area on the opposite side of the water and checked to see if there was anything interesting over there. After swimming around in the sandy beach area on the other side for a little bit, I made my way back where Kathy was sitting. It was rocky on that side, so it was not as pleasurable to stay in the water. So I got out and we both sat around enjoying some snacks we had brought with us. After a couple of hours, we decided to walk around some more. Step, step, steps. This is when we came across another shelter, which was further down behind the buildings, under a few huge trees. There were two guys there who called out hello. We said hi and ended up chatting with them from a distance for a little while. We found out from them that this whole town had been flooded back in May and most of the town was underwater for a week or two. As we were headed back to the RV, we met a couple who were sauntering around on the banks of the water as well. They said a polite hello and we ended up chatting with them. It turns out uh, they lived not too far up the road near Penticton. They had come down here for a day trip only to find that the campground was not operating. The flooding had apparently caused some damage. I say not operating because it wasn't actually closed. They were just not charging for people to stay. The couple told us that they uh, were told that they could camp there and plug in for free, but they were also told not to expect that everything was in good working order as far as the washrooms and so on. They urged us to come park over there as there was an open spot right next to them with working electrical hookup, so we did. We settled in next to them, then proceeded to get together for a barbecue and a chat. They supplied a salad and wine, and we supplied some burgers and some other niceties. Nice folks. We ate and talked into the evening, and then we each went back to our trailers for the night. They left early in the morning, but left us a note with their phone number and address saying that if we did make our way up Highway 97 near Penticton area, we should stop by and say hi. We uh, wanted to spend another night here, so we left that possibility open. We did some more walking around, scouting out the place and enjoying the beautiful scenery. Then, 
then after supper, we checked the internet to see what the town had to offer. Step, step, step. Turns out there was some form of live show scheduled in the park just up the road for the next afternoon. So we made plans to check that out. The next day we walked around the town a bit, then went over to the park with our lounge chairs and enjoyed some live music. It was fun. When we got back to the RV, we heard that Highway 97, the highway up towards Penticton, as we mentioned in the previous video, had been closed down due to severe uh, wildfires. We basically just hung out at the RV for the rest of the night. The next day, we checked the latest news and it seems that Highway 97 was still shut down with reports that it may be down for a few days or more. So, this is when we decided to continue on our trip down Highway 3 instead. This is also where we realized that if we had stayed that extra day in Frank, we may well have gone straight up Highway 97 instead of stopping in this town, and thus would likely have been caught in the middle of the fires having to wait for the highway to reopen. Or worse. Anyways, stay tuned as the next video has us meeting an eclectic country music singer in one of the coziest little towns you can ever imagine. Stay tuned. Ciao for now.